Hi, everybody. So we're going to go over the basics of NSI. Um, NSI means neurosomatic intelligence. It's a method of efficiently working with your nervous system to create a more conscious and deliberate approach to modulating your nervous system response. Um, the founders of this particular method are Matt Bush, Elizabeth Kristoff, and Melanie Weller. And they've taken a whole range of really simple moves and made them into processes, easy, broken down drills, we'll call them. And the point of all this is to allow you to do tough things like change your relationship paradigm or experience disruption in your relational world. And then with intention, bring yourself into a calm state again. Now, the goal isn't to stay calm all the time. The goal is not to miss out on experiencing the highs and lows of being alive or being relational, but we do want to be able to choose, to elect, to return to homeostasis. That's what I like, the choice versus, I'll just wait. It'll come back eventually. Right. Time doesn't actually make everything better. And frequently, when we're going through big changes, if we don't have a way to consciously and intentionally return to that, that window of tolerance, return into the the state where our body and mind feel calm, then things like changing paradigms feel like they can't fit into our life. So that's why we're doing this. Um, it's also just really efficient. I'm not going to ask you to take on hours and hours of practice, but I have two requests. One is that you find at least three of these drills that seem to give you a positive response. A positive response, we'll go over what it looks like in a minute. And I want you to write them down and have them ready to use so that you can use them when we, we'll call them rescue drills. You'll use those rescue drills when you are activated, when you're struggling to bring you back into your window of tolerance, right? But I would also like you to commit to practicing these different moves of regulating your nervous system daily. So when I get up every morning, I do a few of them. I usually do at this point, three or four different ones. And I do them as early as right when I wake up. You'll see how simple some of these drills are. You can do some of them lying in bed. And the point here is that if we want to be able to regulate well, and then we need to practice regularly. Simple as that. So that's that covers what is NSI and why we're using it, but what it actually looks like, that's the, the meat of this. So Really, we're going to go over the TDA process. Right. You're going to test, you're going to drill, and you're going to assess. And you're going to use the test, drill, assess method all the time, all the time with us. Whenever we're talking about, hey, um, is your nervous system regulated, right? Or are you feeling dysregulated? What we're going to be doing is using the test, drill, assess um, mode to see. Am I regulated? Am I feeling calm? Could did I, I do get me where I was going? Yeah. Or did it go somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. So, Ken, would you go over a few options for, for the test? test? Yeah. Yeah. So we we don't want to use the system we're trying to fix to check whether we're fixing the system. It's like a conflict of interest. Uh, so we use things like range of motion. It's, it's separate from um, the part of our brain that's, that's doing all the thinking and judging. Um, so range of motion, things like um, how far can I turn right now? And you've got a bit of a wall a bit of a wall here. But um, the idea is that it's a pretty objective thing to do. How far did I actually get to? And so someone could watch you and say, how's that going? Uh, Which is very different from, this, <laughs> this is very, very different from asking yourself mentally yeah, to assess it. whether you are feeling good. Assessing whether you're feeling good, right? And I'm using big air quotes there. You will frequently talk yourself into um, an answer. Um, I do too. We all do. That's a human thing. So the testing methods we're going to use, let's that, use four of them. Yeah. So, or five of them, I think. So that here, I can stand a little closer. So I call this one the Charlie's Angels. I point forward and I check what's my rotation. I do let my feet stay planted, but I let my hips and spine rotate fully and I check what my rotation is. Um, I'm not trying to stretch it. I'm just checking how tight am I. 
The next one is head the rotation. Head rotation. Just just stand with your with your shoulders still and just turn your head to each side. How far does it go? And notice where you're looking yep. to. Yep. Where do you get to? Then you can do. Um, we call this the first rib. Um, the first rib or lifted first rib. All you're going to do is that same head um, rotation, but then you tip your ear toward your rib cage and feel unusually, oh, yep, on this side, I'm very, very tight, right? So the reason I'm going to use that one for me is I am tight. So I can tell if I get a, dif a, dis a different response from my body, I can tell. So if I do a, a drill, I will feel more ability to flex within my comfort range. Range of motion tends to be the easiest one. We could also do toe touches. We could just literally see how is my how is my ability to touch my toes. Um, range of motion is one option and it's good because it offers you this physical measure of how um, how relaxed, what, what sort of relaxed state your nervous system is in. And it's then, not the only one. We can also use voice. I like the voice. Yeah. Um, so voice can be a great indicator. You your voice settles nice and and low. When I'm relaxed, like now apparently, <laughs> um, my voice is nice and low. And when I the tensor I get, it starts to get a little high and tight and um, not as resonant. So one of the the, the tests is to just do a, like a, a glissando, a scale. And there was a little sticky spot little there. Sticky spot. And catch. It's not that there's a problem if you can't smoothly do the scale, but it'll let you know. Like, does it feel? Can you reach your range? Can I reach my range? Yeah. And will my voice sort of settle down? So the simplest way to assess any of these is: Did I get a positive response? Thumbs up. That means I saw an increased range of motion. Um, I, I felt an increased range of motion, or did, am I able to more smoothly move through my vocal range? Yeah. So, so that's the test portion. So you want to test every single time you start off, but and, and it is a good idea to continually assess. We'll talk about that in just a second, but the test is sort of a baseline. It's just setting, how am I today? How is my tightness today? Then we're going to Drill. And we're going to do some drills. So Ken and I are just going to run drills. through a whole bunch of drills. There are so many to choose from. We're going to try to run through these efficiently. And e after each one, the idea is to assess. So you test and then you assess, did the drill have a positive or increased range of motion response? Did it have a neutral response? In which case we can increase the intensity of the drill. Or did you actually have a negative response? There's nothing wrong with your body not liking a particular drill. So if you have a negative response for now, we're just going to say that drill is not for you. And that's fine. You don't have, not all of these will suit every nervous system. And you are attempting to gain the operating manual for your nervous system. Not mine, not yours. Nobody can give it to you, but this is a way that you can start to find out what's in there. Right. So let's start running through some. Um, I like to start with the smelly stick. Smelly stick. stick. I do. I do. I like this one. So I'll take off my glasses for this one because I can actually do a great, um, I can level it up a little bit. So I simply hold, it's just a scent stick, um, something that I like smelling. This one happens to be grapefruit. Um, and I block one nostril and I hold the smelly stick underneath my other nostril. And then I tap here while inhaling. Then I let myself relax. Now I check again. Oh, and I got a significant. I, I can see the difference from here. I got a really significant um, increase in my range of motion, which I tend to. That's I started with one where, that's pretty easy to see. You can see it again here if I assess. Oh, yeah. Big I could there. barely move there. So that is that one works really well for me. It not might not work for you. The point of all of these is to find the ones that work for you. So. I just call that one the smelly stick. It's activating cranial nerve one. We could go through every different one and tell you all the different nerves that you're stimulating in your body in order to create some sort of response. But let's I'm, keep it practical. Let's keep now. it really practical for now. Yeah. So after the smelly stick, let's do, um, oh, let's just do hands. Hands. Okay. Simple. 
And this one, um, yeah, yeah, you can do evil genius hands, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at this point, all we're doing right now is we're just giving our our hands a sense of like, we're here, we're here. This is, I have hands, they exist here. I have a body, I can, I can move up to my wrists. And I like this one because I can do it during a meeting. I can do it anytime. Yeah, some of these look kind of funny. Yeah. Um, to do out in public. Don't uh, let looking funny look, get in your way. <laughs> this is, yeah, I mean, do them anyway, but this one is a pretty subtle one. So simple as that. So I, you can retest. Feels really good. Oh, yeah. I, I feel the difference. So Ken's assessing. He's he's assessing a difference. I'm assessing a, a difference. So yeah, those would so be that, positive that for positive. both of us. Another hand one is to do figure eights with your fingers and hands, which this one, unless you're watching a video, will make no sense whatever <laughs> whatsoever because I have no idea how to explain it. But you're allowing your wrists to move in a figure eight motion with your oh, fingers hands. following. And this one can be stacked with other drills. We're going to talk about stacking in just a little bit. There's another hand one. I'll just assess. Oh, I got a very positive response from that. That was, I wasn't actually expecting it. I don't often get a, a big response from this one. And here's the thing. If I don't get a, a big response or if I get a negative response, then whatever I do last, I want to have a positive response. We want to finish on a high note. So I would go back and do one that I got a positive response from. So let's do, um, oh, just arm flap rotation. It'll, it Actually, it arm might be easier. Just, no, this oh, one. this one, yeah. This one. So yeah, remember, you're a little kid, and you <laughs> see, I, I got your microphone again. That's what I was afraid was going to happen. Um, when you were a little kid, and you just like let your arms flap at your sides, let your spine twist, let your arms flap, and hit, and let your arms hit you. Don't try to control them. Let them, let them hit. I'm that, stay out of the way. Yeah, that one is that one's fantastic. It's also a good one to teach little kids. Little kids automatically do it often um but it's a great nervous system regulator for many of us um i'll do it I'll, again i'm going to check but this time i'm going to check toe touch and i got what i would say is a neutral response to that it didn't do a lot i often have to stack that drill in order to get a positive response so all by itself it doesn't give you the level of stimulation that your body exactly exactly okay. so um next is self-massage Reminding yourself you have a body. Reminding Which your body we, you have a body. We did a little our, here. Our hands. Yeah, but especially over clothes in particular. Mm. Reminding yourself, reminding your body where it is in space. Our bodies are really insecure yeah. in a way. We could say our brains are insecure about our bodies, actually, not not our bodies. Our bodies are okay. And are you are you more um giving the skin sensation or, or are you getting I into actually, the muscles? I actually move I, I'm attempting to kind of move the skin around a little bit okay, that... and give but i tend to like fairly um intense stimulation somebody else might be doing more of a, a soft smooth motion the idea is simply to remind your body of where it is in space where is your body in space and i'll go all the way down touch my rib cage touch my back and i have a body us, i'm here in space you see us um not testing beforehand because we're using the test from the last the last yeah um when you're in the last assessment when you're in the midst of oh. an nsi session that's normal you're you're assessing along the way to make sure that you didn't get a, a tightening a tightening back up um but self-massage can be done at the beginning of almost any session but um yeah that one doesn't necessarily look as as uh sane in public <laughs> so yeah we want to learn a bunch of them one of them that i really really love for almost any time because most people will just think you have a headache is the inner eyebrow right yeah so yep. cranial nerve one in and for me cranial nerve one really likes stimulation so i just find the spot at the start of my eyebrow here i like to use my thumb personally and i just rub in a little circle and it's a light, light pressure. It's right? a light You're pressure. Pushing yeah, um, as if you were holding a piece of paper against your face, like that that level of pressure. You don't need to press hard. And while you're doing these, breathe. So I'm actually talking through them all yeah. and not breathing. 
regularly, and that's not ideal. So each of these we're gonna do for a, a number of repetitions. You could do any of them for between 15 and 60 seconds, or you might do five rotations or five, you'll see all these different ones. You could pick an amount, pick a number. So for this one, I try to go, I'll just count to 30 while I'm doing the inner eyes, eyebrow. Um, and then I assess to see what was the response. That one was interesting for me because I tightened up on one side. So I'm actually going to do the other cranial nerve. I'm going to, I'm going to even out a Did little you bit. Tighten up on the opposite side? I tightened up on the opposite side. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to repeat it and see how that goes. And you know what? I'll stack a drill right now. Stacking drills just means we're doing more than one at a time. So I'm going to, I'm going to increase the intensity by doing another drill. So I'm balancing at the same time. So she's lifted up one of her feet. So she's on one foot right now, using the vestibular, all the, all the nerves yes. that keep your balance. Yeah. And that relaxed my body again. And when I relax my nervous system, I feel my, my voice drop again too. Yeah. There's that, that, yep. that tightening that happens then dissipates. Okay. Another one, bag breathing. Big fan. Uh, this one works really well for me. Um, so I'm just going to breathe regular, but I'm going to put my mouth in the bag so that... Um, so he's going to seal off around. I'm looking to get the sensation of air hunger. I'm not looking to uh, make this intense. Just get to the point where I feel like I want to take a deep breath. That's all. Nothing past that. So... It's generally six to 12 breaths. Um, it depends on your unique body, but that is generally the case. If it takes more than 12 breaths, you might not be blocking off the air around the edges of the bag. I like a small Ziploc bag because it's so, and then breathe in and out. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm uh, feeling more regular. Yeah, I really that, that one. I really feel the difference there. Okay, so now let's do um, let's do burst breathing now. Mm -hmm. Um, you there are a lot of ways to do air hunger. You could also, if we weren't mic'd right now, you could do squats or burpees. You could just do an exercise that you might actually like until you're short of breath because we're looking. When it comes to the air hunger stuff, we're just looking to actually really increase your body's desire to take deep breaths, right? Changing respiration works, but being told to just breathe often doesn't work. So if you do something that stimulates deeper, more sustained yeah. and complete breaths, And I'll, that's I'll sometimes just hold my breath for a while. Like if I don't have a bag around or I'm not in the right circumstance, I'll just hold my breath until I feel like breathing. And so that's an interesting one. If you are a trauma survivor, especially cap T trauma, capital T trauma, um, have holding your breath might be a trigger for you. So yeah. it's it's yeah. not for you, so it works it's for not, you. Yeah. This is why it's so important that you get to know your system and yeah. how this works for you. But another air hunger, uh, well, this one kind of works on air hunger, but it's also it's it's also a circular. Oh, Burst yeah. breathing is is interesting. Ken's going to demonstrate it. It's it's about the forceful exhale, really. It, it's and it's it's keeping it's like using the muscles up here to breathe. You know, sometimes we talk about breathing deep. We breathe into the stomach. That's not what this is. This is actually all up here and keeping the air moving. So it's just quick quick breaths out, quick breaths in. So it's. I'm breathing out through my mouth and in through my nose. And then I can I can work to speed it up. Um, and also even intensify it by by speeding it up. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so and now breathe all the way out. Now assess. And for whatever reason, that one usually gives me a neutral to negative response. Yeah. So I had, how do you do that? Now, if you have experienced a neutral one, go back and do something positive. Right. So what might you choose? You have some that 
tend to work for you? Uh, one that we haven't gotten to yet. Sure, works what is really it? well for me, which is this one. Ah, the tongue stuff. Okay. We talked about <laughs> looking silly. Tongue and stuff. I like tongue stuff. <laughs> feeling like well. maybe you don't want to do some of these because they make you look silly, but <laughs> sticking your tongue in your cheek pocket um, tends to work really well for a lot of people. There's actually a set of tongue drills. Let's just run through the tongue drills. So tongue in cheek pocket is one. And I, I, I'm pushing enough to feel like a stretch in my cheek muscles. Mm -hmm. Is that how that works for you? Yeah, it just feels, and it feels good. The, the also... key here, again, remember to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> remember to breathe while you're doing it. And then I'll assess. Yeah, I get a positive one, positive response myself for that. Another tongue option is to um, do a tongue release where you just grab your tongue. You can use a tissue if you want. Grab your tongue and pull. I know that one works because I get this deep exhale. Uh -huh. It's a funny one. It is. It does feel funny it's to grab really, my tongue and pull it out of my mouth. And... It's really interesting to see the differences because that one does, like has the complete opposite effect on me. It, right. That, that is a uh, very... Which actually the person who taught it to us said the same thing. Yeah. And it actually, that, that the tongue stuff in general just causes an activation versus a deactivation. Activation, that's it, yeah. So... There's also tongue circles. You'll probably hear and see these a bunch. They're easy to do in a Zoom room, um, and you can still see that people are doing them. So tongue circles, you're going to take your tongue and run it along your top teeth, between your teeth and your lip, your upper lip, and then across the back of your soft palate and then around. So as if you were going around your top braces, if you had braces. Hmm. And then I'll change directions and go the other way. And test this. I have a few different um, assessments available to me because I did a bunch at the beginning. And what you said about the breath release that you got from the from the tongue work and uh, yawning, yawning, those kinds of things. Just Good. keep an eye out. Just watch for them because they're an indication that your body just was was releasing in something, so that releasing through something like you. That particular drill um, was very helpful. Yeah. Uh, that just happened with the tongue circles. I felt myself just automatically like sigh. Inhale, right. Exhale. So a neurological sigh is we have the data on that. Neuro the 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 physiological sigh response. Um, it it's it in itself is neurostimulus. So you can also just actively sigh, just <sighs> letting yourself make noise when you're sighing works for a lot of us. Um, another tongue piece is mewing. Mew. Mewing. Mewing, it's named after some doctor, Dr. Mewing. Um, it just you're just gonna use your tongue to squeegee the roof of your mouth from back to front. So all I do is I press my tongue up against the roof of my mouth, not painfully, but firmly, and I squeegee toward the front and then down. So I'm going up, down, up, down. Yeah, this isn't one we can show. Can't show that. Because you can't do it with your mouth open, really. No, in fact, you want your lips closed, your teeth just slightly open so you're not clenching. Um, and you can also up the level of mewing and do um, what we in the NSI circles are currently calling Vomer Simpson. There's a bone called the Vomer and it's in up above the roof of your mouth, above your soft palate there. Um, and Vomer Simpson just sort of caught on. So um, you can do it with your thumb. You can just press upward. There's like a small bump down in the roof of your mouth. That's where you're pressing. And then you can press down on the top of your head. And then I go I go in little circles in one direction up here and little circles in the other direction down here. That one, every time. Oh. I'm like, why would that matter? Yeah, but there is. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a saying in, in some... Um, uh, physiology circles, they're like, I don't know, you fix the vomer, you kind of fix everything. 
I don't know what the deal is. I don't actually need to. This is one of those times when I'm like, I don't know. It just seems to work. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, it. It could explain a little bit why people suck their thumb when, when they're young and then they keep doing it for a long time. I know I had a brother who sucked his, his fingers for a very long time. One of the yeah, things you're doing. You sucked his thumb for a really long time. That's true. Yeah. So um, you, it's, I mean, it's one way to stimulate cranial nerves and to put the vomer, put pressure on the vomer bone. Um, so another option now is to move into, we can do footwork and then we could do eye work. Yeah. Okay. Um, do some footwork do so first. Footwork, so I'll go over here. You go over here. So obviously you need to see my foot. So let's do some footwork here. I'm going to start by just showing how I would do a foot flexion and toe extension. So a foot flexion and toe extension is just as simple as this. I'm just going to peel my foot up and, and, and then curl the toes under and come down. My chair is moving. So it's almost like you're making this a, one. It'll be easier to see. Almost like you're making a circle with your big toe, like a circle right here. Yeah. And this one's really hard for me, and it didn't used to be. I have not been doing footwork for a long time, and I've been struggling with this one. So this one can be challenging for some people. Other people love it. Another option for the feet, and I'll go over this pretty simply, take a piece of cloth. You don't want your hands. You actually want to use cloth so that you're giving non-hand stimulus, and you're going to ground by, by rubbing your foot all over. And this one, it's going to sound funny, but while you're doing this, I want you to say, this is my foot. This is my foot. These are my toes. And you just, you're just rubbing with a piece of cloth. I use my sock because it's handy. I'm going to provide stimulation to my whole foot, the sole of my foot. This is my foot. And then I, I wiggle between in between the, the metatarsals. This is my foot. This is my foot. This is my foot. This is my foot. And then I notice, yep, this foot, the foot that I just did all that stimulus on, feels much more grounded and I feel much more in place. This one gives a lot of positive response for a lot of people. So okay. I would definitely try that one, try it on both feet. Um, I won't do both feet right now, but I would in general do both feet. So those are a couple of options for feet. Your feet are very, very grounding. If everything else is feeling overstimulating, frequently footwork is a positive for people. So now let's get into some, uh, let's do some uh, eye stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some eye stuff. Um, you want to start with, I'm going to start with my favorite one, gaze okay. stabilization. Yeah. So gaze stabilization, I'm going to put my, uh, I like to just use my thumbnail. I'll actually use that little half circle at the bottom of my thumbnail. And then I'll pick a spot 15 feet or so out in the distance. Um, this room's a little small, so it'll be a little less than that. And I'm going to move my gaze from that little tiny spot here, let it come into focus. Then I'm going to move not my head, but just my eyes to look at something right behind my thumbnail 15 feet away. So I'm not moving my head, just bringing my eyes from near focus to far focus. I also think of this as the Grover, near, <laughs> far, near, far. Gaze stabilization for me tends to work very well. Um, I mean, I, I use this one even uh, like during sex, during um, during meetings, anytime. This, this one's, one, it's very do, subtle. Do, People often don't notice. A, a near and you can pick something near. If I'm, in a, if I'm in a meeting and I can't, I'll hold up my pencil because most people aren't even noticing. I'll just sort of hold up the end of my pencil and choose that. Um, gaze stabilization, that's what that one's called. Let's, um, you wanna do uh, eye circles? Eye circles, so I'm gonna, you pick a target, uh, you could hold up a pencil, whatever you feel like looking at. Um, so you could give yourself a, a little target and- Don't move your head. I see oh, you, I see yeah. you try so, to move your so head. The idea is you're gonna leave your head still and it's your eyes that are gonna move. This is all about the, the eye experience, not the head experience. Now I'm gonna move this in a circle. Um, I don't want it to go behind my nose. So the I circle can't be huge. Both eyes on the target. So yeah, the circle can't and doesn't need to be huge. You're just looking to feel it. 
is moving a little bit around. And um, try not to blink at the same same spot on the circle as you're moving them around. You know, so you don't block out one part of the circle. Okay. Okay, we should be recording again. All and right. the point of this recording is to be succinct, but my goodness, there are a lot of tools to lot. use. Would you do yes, yes, no? Yes, no? yes, no, no. So I had just done eye circles where you hold your head still and you let your eyes move around. This is the other thing where you pick a spot on the wall or something in front of you to focus your eyes on, and then you move your head, but not your, well, you move your head while keeping your eyes fixed on that point. Right. So, so yes, yes, no, no. And the idea is to move in vertical and horizontal planes. So you, you want your chin moving yep. in a plane, right? Right. So this is um, moving up here and then I move here. And, and you have picked a spot only about seven feet away because of the distance of the room, but yeah. choosing a spot a little further away yeah. works well. I can well. actually do this and look out towards the trees. Oh yeah, no, that does work better because it lets me move 10, my head further. Because I don't fifteen feet away. I don't want to block my vision with my nose. I want to keep both eyes fixed. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's assess yes, yes, no no for yourself. That was a, a little positive, not huge for me, but okay, it's good. So how about um, you want to do saccades? There's two spots, and this is the thing where you. Uh, um, you need two points of reference, and you're going to move your eyes between the two, so, but not your head. And yeah. if you watch closely, go ahead, Ken, do that. The first few, so as he moves his eyes left, he doesn't get a motion of his head. As he moves them right, he was getting a slight motion. Okay. So as a as a watcher, that's I can, good to hear because I didn't notice it. I can say see that and say, oh, so that's that's something you can train. So you can train. See now you're still. You yep. can train your nervous system to to ah. still, right? And so these you know tools... what I'm doing? Blinking when I move. Oh, okay. And that's the, the point is to let your eyes track. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So the only reason I drew attention to that is because... Ooh, that was a good one. That's it. There, there are a bunch of these that if you have somebody watch you who knows what they're looking for, they can give you some feedback. And rehabbing a drill is essentially rehabbing the your ability to get your nervous system to do what you intend for it to do, to get a, a physical response that is in align with your actual intention. So that can take some buddy work in order to actually get. I am no better at it than Ken is. Uh, if you watch me do a drill, you're going to see some, um, they're tells. They're yeah, tells. They're we tells. know that there's there's a sticky spot. So another one that we might think about is in that yes, yes, no, no. If my vision, if my if my chin pulls, like pulls to one direction, mm. that would be a tell. Oh, something's going on. And in that case, um, the tell is that something's going on with the semicircular canals. Let's do smooth pursuits because it's similar to what you were just doing. Saccades are two points that I'm moving my eyes between. But smooth pursuits, you just use one smooth, and you follow smooth it. Smooth pursuits. And, and this is the head tracks. Along this is, no, nope, this is not. This is, not, this is oh, okay. just your eyes. All right. Smooth pursuits so, mean just bring the pencil across your range yeah. of vision and, and again, let your I want eyes to keep both follow eyes it. on it. So I don't want to like move it so far that I can only see it with one eye. Yep. I want to have both eyes on it. Just the eyes, no head. Which... I can and feel that it's so not. Uh, what you just did is helpful. So put your hand on your chin. Yeah. Anchor yourself. It's no, not, can, your head won't always want to do what you're telling it to do. So that's, that's side to side, but then there's up and down to. Right. So that one when you were holding your chin, yeah. yeah, I could see that you smoothed out your eye motion. So don't be afraid to adapt these to work well for you. And, and you would do this to all the companies? No, points. that's actually the next one. That's the next one. Never that's mind. Never mind. One. We're just going to stick to smooth pursuits. Okay. Smooth pursuits are across your range of vision. Um, compass points, uh, it's um, VORC, oh, VOR cancellation. It activates. In this case, I'm going to intentionally 
track as if I had a string between my nose and the point of the pencil there, I'm going to track with my vision and with my head. And I'm going to do it in all directions and I'm going to try not to stop. It's very challenging for me to do while I'm talking. I bet it is. And it's, it's pretty interesting how, how difficult it is to move your head and eyes together. And also how difficult it is to move your head without your eyes or your eyes without your head. Like whatever you're intending to do takes some concentration, which is part of the, the, the experience of the drill. Yeah. So there are six, six directions here, right? So it's, this one's hard for me to do while talking, um, but the compass points, right? So go Northeast to Southwest and, and go North to South and then go, you right. want to work your way around the compass rows. The, the next one for eyes though, I think is my favorite because it's so simple. I, I just really like it. Pencil push-ups. Pencil push I have my pencil. I am going to put my pencil out in front of me at arm's length. I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the tip of the pencil. I pick the smallest thing I can focus on and I'm going to keep focusing on it and then bring it back out. And I'm going to do that maybe five times. And how are you deciding how close to get it to your face? I am choosing to bring it to where it, um, I can keep it still in focus. I, am fo okay. I can focus here. Out here has now gotten all blurry, but I, I can focus up okay, here. Okay, so you're keeping now, focus on. Yeah. I happen to be farsighted, so what my focus is is a little different than it used to be. Um, so it is still slightly blurry, but it's in, yeah. in focus in general. Um, pencil push-ups, that's what that one's called. Um, let's move on and do a little bit of Oh, and before we move on though, eye stuff, eye stuff is pretty high stimulus. If something is high stimulus, one way to work with it, if it's, if it's hard for you, is to lie down or sit down. So make your body um, more comfortable and then try that same exercise. So if the pencil push-ups while you're standing are disoriented and give you a negative response, try them laying down. If you decrease your overall threat load, right, your overall, the effort your body's putting into just being. Standing takes, takes, takes some effort. effort. Takes your, your nervous right. system has to do stuff. So one option is to um, decrease the intensity by moving to a simpler position. Now let's do um, jaw glide and rib glide. Okay. I do them at the same time, not at the same time, but I, I show them at the same time because they're subtle movements, both of them. Um, they have, well, they, these things don't move all that far. Yeah, so, so jog glide. You do. You can show the jog glide. So You've got plenty of jaw to show. Jaw. Turn to the so side. To the side. And so, then okay. you're going to glide your okay. jaw forward and back, and it's subtle. You don't obviously you're not clenching your teeth. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even have my teeth closed. Don't right have now. your teeth closed because they would grind. The idea here is, yep, gliding forward and back. And now, can you glide your lower jaw in a in a small circle, like small that's, circle. that's pretty big. Okay, a small just exaggerated so you can see it. Circle, as if you were just going around the edge of a coin. Mm -hmm. If you were tracing the edge of a coin with yeah. your lower teeth. And then you could turn and do it in the other direction. That is... Uh... Stimulates a bunch of cranial nerves again. So that's the jaw glide. How, what's your that, what's your assessment? My my body likes that. My nervous system. And now rib glide. A, a, another one. It's it's subtle. So this rib one glide. Is real subtle for me. I have trouble being sure I'm doing it. But. Right. So the rib glide. If you put a hand here, and you and you move your ribs, so your hand's a little low. I would put your hand here. I know it's tricky because we have microphones on. Yep. He's sliding his rib cage forward and back. I'm trying to keep my hips still and my shoulders still and move my ribs and back and, and forth. And this one is relatively subtle, but it also produces a pretty strong response, I've noticed, for a lot of people. And it's subtle enough, again, to do in a place that you wouldn't necessarily want to be doing um, pull out your tongue exercises. <laughs> <laughs> so assess the assess your uh, range of motion. Oh, yeah. 
Was that positive for you? It was positive for me. So they they aren't all really, really big movements. Um, let's do a few ear things now. And um, the first ear thing, I, I the name I have heard it called is the Simba. I'm not actually sure why. Maybe it has to do with the structure of the ear. I haven't looked it up. But you're you're going to put your finger in the the spot above, not your ear canal. There's like a little ridge right above your ear canal. There's a spot, there's a, there's a flat spot and you just rub in there in a circle. I get little, it sounds kind of like crispy crunchies. It sounds like Rice Krispies when I do this. Um, when you, when you do this one, you can also stack it. It's a good one to stack because you don't have a lot else going on. So I stack it with my tongue. Nice and simple. And then I'll assess. Awesome. I got a very positive response from that. That um, that's only one of the options for ears. Another is tragus pull. So your tragus is that little that little V shape that sticks out into your ear. Grab both of them and pull gently. When I say pull gently, I mean like on a scale of one to ten, you're pulling it like a two or a three, just gently gently tugging outward. Do you get a lot of response from the tragus pull? Um. I have mostly found it to be neutral. So yeah, so not everybody does, but like mine is intense. I had yeah. such a huge, and I've noticed that my migraines respond really well to ear work. So something to try out and see. We're all different, but you can try it. Um, okay, let's do glossopharyngeal because it's fun to That's say. Fun to say. <laughs> so for the glossopharyngeal nerve, the nerve that runs here, we're gonna need a straw and some liquid. And we're going to also, we can up the intensity with a tool that vibrates, right? So I sent you a little tool that vibrates. So we turn this to vibrating mode. I'm going to turn my head. I'm going to sit. I'm going to sip. And I'm going to stroke along the jawline with the vibrating tool. I'm going to sip and swallow. So. Yeah, it gets messy if you don't swallow. That's what he said. Sorry, oh, guys. I will. Sorry. I am a 13 year old. It's true. This one, I always get a strong response on. Yep, me too. So, um, the glossopharyngeal, if you don't like, if the vibrating is too much, you could just stroke along the jawline. You could also just use the, the end of a pencil you to stroke, stroke along there. You can tap. You can tap along there as well. There's a bunch of options. Um, Okay, we're we're done with most of that. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do a couple more with the vibrating tool. So I chose to send you the vibrating tool because if, like me, you are a fairly high stimulus person, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stimulus seeker. So I have found that the vibrating tool works really well to help me do a bunch of different things. I'm going to get out. So the reason it comes with multiple little um, head pieces is because I can use this in multiple ways. So I could use this where I did Simba. Some people are like, wow, that is way too much for me. My whole body just went, okay, awesome. That's great. Thank you. Um, I will also sometimes do that one and then stack it with glossopharyngeal by turning my head or with my tongue. The assessment for that for me is generally very positive, but it is a lot of stimulus. So if it's not positive for you, that's fine. Just recognize that that's not for you. When you, um, obviously I just use this in my ear. So now I'm not going to want to put it in my mouth because, you know, I mean, you do you, but I don't want to go from ear to mouth. That's not my thing. So I'm going to change this out and show you a couple more quick ones. So I changed out the head of the vibrating tool, and now I'm going to do one that people seem to love or hate, the tongue. <laughs> so another tongue thing that you can do is use your vibrating tool. Imagine your tongue has a line down the center of it, and you're going to work this vibrating tool across one half and then across the other half. It occurs to me that you have one of those. If you have one of those ultrasonic toothbrushes, you can you can just do that when you brush your teeth. I'm 
I got a crazy, crazy positive that. Yeah. from that. My body very much likes that. It likes high stimulus. And so that makes sense to me. Um, another couple simple things. I sent you a little brush, um, but you can use any, any brush you want. When you're doing hand stimulus, you can use a brush instead of your hand. You can use the brush to do foot stimulus. Um, you can also use, I have a long back brush that I use to, to do full back brushing stimulus, body brushing. This gives your body a sense of where it is in space. And so it's actually a great idea, even though this feels silly to be like, this is my hand. This is my hand. This is my hand. You're actually calming your body by reminding yourself that you're here and present in your whole body. There's also available for you a bunch of more, even funnier looking options. Would you like to do demon cluck or shall oh I? God, demon cluck. Well, my microphone might fall off. Okay. I will hold your microphone. And um, demon cluck is all about rage release and really feeling extra. I'm just coming over toward a microphone so I can talk because you're going to want to warn the people around you yes. that you're about to do this because there's stomping involved. Okay. So demon clock is all about, yep. Get yourself into chicken position. Chicken position. Chicken position. Um, get your stompers ready. And I suggest turning on music and doing this for a whole song. Turn on the metaliest, like whatever, whatever the hardest drumming music something intense and puppet show theme song okay something what, really happy. whatever works for you okay. and then go for it i don't want to it's, overwhelm the microphone it's really really it's, it gets really loud when stomp. he does this one you you stomp you uh, you're gonna stomp and you you're gonna exhale sharply exhales. it's serious that and, that stimulates so much of your body. It's good for rage release. It's good for um, upregulating. So a lot of the stuff we've talked about is about regulating you down from hyper arousal into your window of tolerance, right? So I'm over aroused and I want to come back down. That's not always what needs to happen. Sometimes we fall into hypo yeah. arousal and we need to upregulate. And some of these things, especially stimulating the vagus nerve, can be upregulating. But this one, demon clock, I find is... So that's amazing. I did like three stomps, three, and I feel more present in my body. Just I feel my whole body more. So find your demon is, clock. So it's activating. Yeah, find your demon clock. Oh. And and keep it handy. And yeah, um, another option for a big rage release is a cold shower with vocalizations. Mm -hmm. Again, warning the people around you because the children will come screaming if you happen to have any handy. Um, but allowing yourself to to shift from a hot shower to a cold shower and letting yourself vocalize through that can be an incredible rage release. I'm mentioning rage releases because it is one of the things that we frequently just don't make space for. But if we don't move our energy through our bodies, it's going to come out sideways. Um, there is one more option that I would like to go over pretty simply. It's the infinity walk. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure whether we can get it in this setting. So an infinity walk is all about walking a figure eight. So you're so, walking a figure eight while keeping your eyes in one position. So I'm just going to have Ken demonstrate it briefly, okay. but he's not going to be able to show you everything. Let's, I'm going to show you his, where he's walking. Yeah. Walk in a figure eight for me. It's, see, this is complicated. I don't think this one works in this space. Yeah. I'm going to reshoot this one in a bigger space um, because the infinity walk is wonderful and it's a great training tool, um, but it really does require a large space yeah, in order to be separate. able to do it well. Um, so if you are missing the infinity walk, you can also, you can absolutely type that one in. You'll find some resources on YouTube to help you with that one. So there are three more things I wanted to cover, which are, they're all passive stimulus. Mm -hmm. So you don't only have to do active stimulation. You can also do passive stimulation. Colored lens glasses, either amber, pink, green, there's all these different, and there's some data to show that different colors give different um, passive stimulus to us. And then what we're getting out of that, well, it depends on our own interpretation. So I happen to find the amber glass 
is incredibly soothing for my nervous system, while green is very, very upregulating. So I use those lenses to help me shift the energy that I want to um, at appropriate times. You have a different set of colors that seem to I work a, a little bit of colors. differently. I've spent an hour with a with a collection of colored glasses doing test, drill, assess by just test, wear it for a little, wear them for a little bit. Doesn't have to be all that long. Um, like how long would you uh, wear yours to assess? Like ten seconds? Like yeah, just just, just I went just really with. <laughs> my gut response to the glasses mm -hmm. and didn't try to over okay. think it at all. Yeah. Um, another option is earplugs. So allowing for yourself to only receive auditory stimulation from one side is another option for shifting what's happening in your body. So there are little earplugs in there, block one ear, I like to do this one and just go about a bit of my day and allow myself to receive more aural sensation from one side than the other. Um, and then I'll, I'll switch it. There's one more and I don't happen to like this one. It doesn't work well for me, but, um, there are ab compression belts. Um, they're, they're like sold as like waist trimmers, which is super strange, but, um, they're like a neoprene belt that you strap around your belly for some people. That's an incredibly soothing, um, experience so if you're having high energy meetings or high or high intensity discussions that can be a very soothing move another option is a weighted blanket which i know a lot of people have shifted to moving right. so those are just some of the options for making intentional choices to have some some things that aren't moves you just they're just passive stimulus that you get and the last thing I want to cover before we wrap up is just a little bit about the threat bucket because we so we just gave you all of this information. These are all just drills, but your the point here is that we all have a threat bucket, our metaphorical threat bucket. And each of us is walking around with a different amount of fullness to this bucket. When you're well regulated, the bucket's got plenty of room in it. And you can respond to situations that come up, conversations that come up, changes that come up with a pretty dynamic and flexible response to the situation. In other words, your nervous system is regulated. And so you have the ability to respond responsibly to, to new threats. And change is threat to the nervous system. The nervous system has one job. Its, its job is to ask, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? So. If your threat bucket is feeling pretty full and it doesn't have any room and any new change comes in, we humans have a tendency to go into one of four patterns, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. I wanna just cover these because you probably recognize your go-to move. You are a flight person. I'm a flight person. Mm -hmm. I tend to be a fight person. Um, my fight, though, doesn't always look like aggressively arguing with someone, and it definitely doesn't look like throwing fists. My fight comes out frequently as inner aggression. I start wanting to control things, wanting to control everything in my life, and really negative self-talk. So that is a form of a fight response. Your flight response doesn't always look like leaving the room. Sometimes it looks like dissociating. Sometimes it looks like changing the subject. Sometimes it looks like getting sleepy, like my my nervous system just is, starts to shut down. So what you were talking about, upregulating. Right. Um, that's one of the, the things I can do, but yeah, different. And the same with freeze. The freeze response is a wide range. And in fact, we all experience freeze quite a lot. Whenever the nervous system has to respond to a perceived threat, it, there's an instantaneous freeze. The question is, how quickly can we go from that freeze and assess our situation into action? So freeze response itself isn't problematic. It's what happens next? Do I go into flop? And flop is where my whole nervous system just shuts down and I basically can't respond to anything. And then of course there's fawn. The fawn response, um, when that was added to the list of the Fs, the, the intention behind it was to point out that some of us learned an adaptive strategy beyond fight, flight, or freeze um, that was related to our ability to connect to others. 
um, our ability to befriend, right? I first learned this as tend and befriend. And I first learned it as, hey, if you were socialized as a woman, you probably learned to tend and befriend. It made a ton of sense to me because even though I have a big fight response, I'm a pretty small person. It wouldn't be advantageous for me to be physically threatening to most people. So instead, I learned to tend and befriend. But a fawn response can look like people pleasing. It can look like an unwillingness to state boundaries or, or hold consequences, consequences for boundaries. It can also look like an unwillingness to have needs or wants at all. So those are four things to keep in mind um, when you're thinking about your threat bucket. How full is your threat bucket or how much room do you have in it? And what response do you have when you have new threats? Because you're all undergoing change all the time and what tools you're going to need and are, are going to depend in part on what, which threat response you tend to get. So Ken and I are both available. There are office hours appointments. Ken is the person to, to see if you want office hours specifically to look for tools and figure out which tool is giving you a response yep. that really works for you. Or if you want to figure out how to stack some drills together, you can find Ken's office hours link in your coaching hub. And if you need to get a hold of me, you can always reach me as well um, through Signal. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.